2.5 limits involving infinity. So what do I mean by an infinite limit as x approaches a? Well, let's look at this example here. And we can see by the graph that the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared is equal to infinity. I'm not saying that the limit exists. We know that the limit does not exist here. We've looked at this example before, in fact. But I'm just describing the behavior in more detail by saying that the limit equals infinity. So here is just our definition and our notation. The limit does not exist. But by saying that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals infinity, we're just showing the particular way the limit does not exist. It's just explaining it in more detail. Okay, so you can say does not exist or equals infinity for now, and it's saying the same thing. So let's just look at figure two. We see there that the limit as x approaches a from both the left and the right is going off to infinity. So we can say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals infinity. And in figure three, we can see that but from both the left and from the right, at x equals a, we're going to negative infinity. We can also have one-sided infinite limit. So I'm just going to go to the next slide where we see some graphs to explain this. So in figure A, we see that at x equals a, okay, of course this red line isn't really drawn in, but this is just for explanation purposes. From the left side, it's going to infinity. We don't actually know what's going on from the right side here. In figure B, we see from the right, it's going to infinity, so we go from the right. In figure C, we see from the left-hand side, it's going off to negative infinity, so we say from the left-hand side. And here from the right-hand side, we're going to negative infinity. Now, when we say that the limit as x approaches a equals infinity or negative infinity, we're pretty much saying that we have a vertical asymptote there, right? And we've kind of seen that. That's what that invisible little red line that we saw in the last slide was. So let's look at two examples. Um, here in figure six, we see y equals ln of x drawn. If you don't know what that graph looks like, please memorize that right now. You need to know what that graph looks like. You also need to know what y equals e to the x looks like, which is just its inverse. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, right? And so we could say here that the limit as x approaches zero from the right-hand side is negative infinity because from the right-hand side, we're going off to negative infinity. And this is saying that the same thing as saying there's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Now here we see a bunch of vertical asymptotes. We see vertical asymptotes at, I'm going to just say x equals pi over 2 plus pi n because at every pi units either to the right or to the left, we see another one. Okay, let's just look at um, pi over 2, and let's just look at what's happening, the limit, as x approaches pi over 2 from the left, and the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the right. Now, I just picked that arbitrarily. Um, there's, I just decided that's what we're going to look at. So, let's first look, so we want to look as x approaches pi over 2, we want to look right here, from the left-hand side. So as we're going left and we're getting there, we're going off to infinity. 
So from the left hand side, we're going to infinity. What's happening on the right? On the right of pi over two. So from the right hand side, if we go from the right side, we're going off to negative infinity. So that's it. So now let's look at limits at infinity. So what's the difference here? Instead of the limit equaling infinity, we have the limit as x approaches infinity, what's happening. So now instead of looking at vertical asymptotes, what do you think I'm looking at? I hope you said horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so here in all three examples, we see that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals l. Note in this figure right here, the third one, that it doesn't necessarily mean, a horizontal asymptote doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't pass through that invisible line where, where the horizontal asymptote is. So that's another common misconception. It just means that it's approaching that value. So let's look at this example here. And what I've done is drawn the graph in for you. So we want to look at the limit as x approaches infinity, meaning what's happening all the way on the right of the graph, and as x approaches negative infinity, what's happening all the way on the left of the graph. And in both cases, from the figure, it's pretty clear that we get 1. Right? All the way on the left and all the way on the right. Now, I just want to show you one more thing that I want you to try in your calculator. Let's go ahead and put in our y equals in y1. Let's put in the function. Now, in order to do the limit as x approaches infinity of y1 of my function, a way to do that on my calculator would be to say, what is y1 of some really big value? So let's just say like a million. And so this is where, remember, you would go to the home screen like we did in class, and you would go to vars and go over to y vars and choose that y1. And by doing that, you should get 1. Similarly, if you want to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative infinity of that function, I would just do y1 of something like negative a million. And you should get 1. So just to break this apart, how to do this on your calculator. So in y1, you're going to go ahead and enter in your equation. And make sure that you're putting parentheses in both the numerator and in the denominator. And then we want to evaluate y1 at 1 million, we said, because that's going to be a really huge value of x. So do second quit. And then on your home screen, you're going to go to vars, go over to y vars, and we're dealing with a function here. And we put our equation in y1, so that's why we're choosing y1. y1 of 1 million. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then we can do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and just use second enter to pull up the last thing that I typed in. And instead of y1 of a million, I want to do y1 of negative a million. And if I put anything in that default overwrites, and so to not overwrite, I can do second insert, and that will not overwrite. Press enter, and I get 1. So as we just said, when we have a limit as x approaches infinity, or the limit as x approaches negative infinity equaling some L, then we can say that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals L. So let's look at another example. Let's look at the arctan graph. So that, of course, is just the tangent graph kind of flipped over on its side. And so now we're going to have horizontal asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And so that's all we're really saying here. And we'll, we see that the left behavior is not the same as the right behavior. But we still have horizontal asymptotes at both places. Uh, 
Um, two important limit laws um, that we're going to be talking about quite a bit are that the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x to the n and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over x over n equals 0. And the way I like to think of that is just 1 over some really huge number, because I'm looking as x approaches infinity, 1 over some really humongous number is 0. Similarly, 1 over some negative humongous number is like negative 0, but we're not going to say negative 0, it's just 0 also. So let's go ahead and evaluate this limit. So my problem here is that I can't do this, I can't really do anything, I can't stick anything in because my denominator at this point does not approach a finite value. Your denominator must approach a finite value for you to be able to evaluate it. So what we're going to do, we're going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the highest power of x that occurs in the denominator. Why? Because as I just said, we want the denominator to approach a finite value as x approaches infinity. Okay, so what do I mean by all this? Let's go ahead and do this problem. What is the highest power of x that you see in the denominator? An x squared. So I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by that highest power each and everything. So I'm just going to simplify. And just in the previous slide, 1 over x to the n is going to be 0. So this is going to approach 0. And this is going to approach 0. And this is going to approach 0. And this is going to approach 0. So we just have 3 minus 0 minus 0 over 5 plus 0 plus 0. That is our answer. And if you go back to remembering your rules of the horizontal asymptotes that you learned in Algebra 2 when you were given a function such as this, what you did was you just, if they had equal powers, then you just took the ratio of their coefficients. That's the same answer that you get. Here's just a graph so you can see what's going on. And we also have infinite limits at infinity, so that just means at infinity it's going off to positive or negative infinity, and the same thing on the left side of your graph. So let's just look at another example, and we're going to do the same exact thing that we just did in our previous example. We need our denominator to approach some finite value, so we're going to divide by the largest power of x that we see in the denominator, and that would just be x. So we divide everything by x. And now simplify. Don't forget to write your limit out until you can substitute. Okay, so this goes off to 0. But we're left with kind of like infinity plus 1, which is just infinity, over negative 1, which is negative infinity. So this limit, all the way on the right side of the graph, what we're saying is it's going off to negative infinity. And that's it for this lesson.